Hey guys, it is Saturday, October 12th, and we are out here at the Great Salt Plains in Oklahoma. Today we're going to be looking for selenite crystals, the hourglass kinds. The Great Salt Plains National Wildlife Refuge is located in northern Oklahoma, just in between the towns of Jet and Cherokee. Before we got there, though, my kids and I decided to stop by the giant wind turbines and have some fun trying to jump the shadows. I have my beautiful daughter Ariel with me today. She is 16 and she's a little bit uh, shy. Doesn't like being on camera. I've got my 13 uh, year old son also, uh, Elias. We have never been here before. This is the entrance going right into it. And it looks like they have a little observation area right up top. It is really, really awesome uh, looking at it right here. Just a totally different landscape. Uh, and I'm about four hours west of where I live. And uh, it's just amazing how much the geography has changed in just a couple hours time. So this is a really neat experience and so we're pretty excited about it today. So I'm going to go up there to the uh, top of the observation area up there. It looks like there's no drones. Here are a few rules and regulations. Uh, you can go ahead and pause the screen and take a look at that if you'd like. All right, so I'm parked right over there at the entrance. I took my wife's van. Um, it's a an Honda Odyssey. So if it's pretty safe driving out here, then you guys should be safe in whatever you're driving. Totally different type of a landscape. This is so neat. We've got about a, a mile from that sign uh, right there. We got about a mile till we get to the dig site uh, out there. It looks like there's a good amount of people out there so far today too. All right, let's get at it. Let's go dig some crystals. All right, so we got head protection. We've got sunblock. We got sunglasses. Well, everybody but me. I love the Lord Farquaad hat. <laughs> Anyhow, so we're about to enter into the uh, dig area uh, where we're going to try to find a spot for the day. And uh, we'll probably only just be here for a couple of hours. So they'll have uh, all the areas all sectioned off where you can dig and where not to dig. So they have uh, signs posted, uh, uh, no, no digging beyond this point, and right next door is the digging area. It's the surface of the moon right here. Really, really cool stuff. So a quick overview of the digging area out here. Um, the boundaries actually go pretty far. Um, thing is, everybody's been digging here all year since this is October 12th. They close in three days on the 15th. We found an area right here that looks like it's been untouched like there's no evidence of a dig hole. So we're gonna try this area for a little bit, see how it uh, does. And then uh, if we don't like it, we'll uh, try another spot out there somewhere. Here is a selenite crystal right here under my finger. But let's get a texture of this uh, salt right here. Look at that, really, really cool. All right, so I got a little bit on here. Let's see how salty it is. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's pure salt. Yeah, good. It's making me make the face. So I was kind of expecting it to be like super windy today. And then I brought some goggles and stuff with us as well because I was expecting the wind to kind of blow uh, a lot of this uh, salt light in people's eyes and stuff. So, uh, but it's really not too bad out there today. My son Elias just found the first uh, one for the day as far as digging. We have a couple oh, of surface finds and stuff. One. But yeah, check that out. Really, really neat. He said he just found another one. Watch it pop. Oh, look at that. Look at that. It's just a, a sheet of salt on top of the dirt. Isn't that cool? That's so neat. My daughter Ariel says she just found a, a neat one that's... Ooh, that is pretty. It has some excellent clarity on it. Okay, so I'm just going to make like a, a, a tailings dump pile over here and I'll sit through that in a little bit. Let's take a look at my bigger pile that I have right over here and see if we can't find something. Here's one right off the top. 
Remember, the sun is always your friend whenever you're digging for crystals. I always have three uh, main rules. I go by shape, uh, the shine, of course, and by color. So they'll have a different color than the dirt, even though they'll be covered in the dirt. What'd you get, Bubba? A crystal. <laughs> oh, you think? Can I see it? Second. Here, hold it up close so we can see. That's pretty awesome, little son. Mm -hmm. Good job, son. You having fun? Mm -hmm. So I have been just basically trying to go off of feel. I can't really make anything out in here. And the stuff that I'm finding so far is pretty small, like this right here, or even smaller. And, but it just, it feels really squishy. And there's something, there's something kind of therapeutic and relaxing about just running your hands through this dirt. It's just, it feels good on your fingers. And he finds another one. Look how small his hole is, and he's pulling them out left and right. And look how big my hole is, and I can't hardly find anything. So I found that the ground is actually pretty soft to sit on. It's actually kind of comfortable. So I'm just uh, planning on just sitting here. Um, I'm sitting on a trash bag so that I don't get all the salt kind of soaking through my clothing. And, uh, and I'm wearing uh, like uh, pants also. It's just some old sweatpants. Um, I always wear old clothes whenever I go rock counting. Uh, just something I know that this might be my last time wearing them. So don't wear any nice clothes whenever you go out looking for uh, rocks. Much of the pieces that I've been finding have been about this size uh, so far. I'm just going through and rubbing my hands through there and looking for something that's shiny uh, or that I feel something hard in the dirt. So when you get these little clumps, I just kind of run my hands through it, looking for um, and feeling for anything kind of heavy or feeling for anything that's hard. And then everything I look through, I just push it off over here to the left. So I have my pile here and all the stuff that I've already sifted through, I just uh, push it off over here to the left. So this is Elias, that's my daughter Ariel, and we are kind of having a little competition. Who's going to have the fullest bucket uh, by the end of our dig today? Who do you think is going to win? Me. Of course. Who do you think is going to win? Ariel. Well, what if you keep doing that right there? I don't think you're going to play much. Mm. Alright, so continuing on with the competition to see who gets the most. I have found a little spot right here where... See, this is kind of a darker brown down here. I haven't really been finding much of anything down in that. But right above that, there is a layer right here where the ground is a little bit more kind of a terracotta color. And I have been finding all kinds of little small ones and some little clusters and stuff. I can feel it and I can hear the crunch every time I put my finger in there. There's a whole bunch of little small ones kind of uh, gathered together. That's right, if you feel it, chase it. <laughs> so let me break up some of that top soil. There's one right here poking out. I'm gonna try and get behind it. So you gotta find that shine. It might be part of a cluster right there. Kinda feels like it might be. Oh, I see the line. You see that line? Oh. Ah, uh, it broke. It was all connected. Oh, look at that. So that little small one. Okay, the sand just came off. Check that out. That's my best find of the day so far. Whew, that is beautiful. Look at that. Hey, Elias, check this one out. That's cool. Whoa, I just got a super long one. Dabble it. Ooh, nice. Here, pull that up again, son. Man, that's a good one, son. Here we go. Oh, check this one here out. <laughs> Look at that. Look how pretty that is. Oh.
That's just beautiful. You think he'll get That's some beautiful there? pieces. The clarity on these pieces is just amazing. It's kind of fitting that it's in uh, Oklahoma because it kind of looks like the little tornadoes inside of the crystals. I think it's pretty cool. Getting the best ones. What do you got there, sweetie? This. Oh, wow. Look at that. My son Elias just dug this one up. This is bigger than anything I have found so far, by far. Oops. And I just dropped it and broke the little sliver off. What? Look at that needle. So I like digging towards the uh, sunlight so I could see it uh, reflecting. But here in the shade, you also see the reflections when you're moving the sand away, this dirt away. You can feel it. And when you start to feel it, you can start to see those little shines. Oops. There we go. And if you feel it. Chase it. What you got there, sweetie? Cluster. Can I see it? <laughs> Look at that. That is awesome. That's the neatest cluster I've seen so far today. Everything they're finding, I'm literally digging right here. They are three feet away from me and they're finding monsters like that. And I'm getting little ones that are like two inches long, if that. Let me see, let me just go through here. Like this right here is an average one that I'm finding, I'm pulling out. And look, they're finding that right there just two feet over from me. Oh my goodness, son, that thing's huge. It's a wood piece. Oh. <laughs> Got me. What'd you get? This one. <laughs> what are you getting over there? Not much of anything. Here, let me see if I can get you one, one of my average ones. <laughs> I get these little itty bitty babies and they're pulling out the big mamas and the papas. I think you guys might win the competition. Of course, they got the shovels, and I'm not using anything. All right, let's get a shovel. Start moving some dirt. See, this right here is about average for me. About one to two inches. See, little babies, little babies. Wanna see what you got, son? What'd you get, Bubba? Oh, nice. Wanna see it? You get a little bit closer? Don't break it. <sighs> Look at that. If it'll focus. What'd you get, son? Look at this soil. Hold on. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It does kind of look like pumpkin pie, doesn't it? <laughs> the filling. So I scraped off about the top uh, three inches or so, and there's not really anything in those top couple of inches. And so between about uh, three inches down to about a foot, that's where we've been finding them. So now I've got uh, less uh, top um, soil to worry about, and I can it'll be easier digging uh, to get these uh, um, six, eight inches uh, right here. You go from this kind of what I call the milk chocolate to the dark chocolate. Uh, the dark chocolate is more of a clay layer. Uh, the milk chocolate, uh, that's where it seems like the crystals uh, tend to form right there. Okay, you get kind of a brown, then it gets a little bit reddish, and then it goes to that uh, darker uh, brown. And it seems like the bulk of the crystals are right here in this layer, uh, going from the, from the milk chocolate to the terracotta to the uh, dark chocolate. It seems like it's right in this area right here is where all the crystals are. And that's just maybe uh, 10 inches, 12 inches or so down below the surface. What you guys pulling out over there? Uh, I took a break, so nothing normal stuff, you know. Uh-huh. Yeah, just those ones that are like five, six inches long. Yeah, nothing good. Yeah. As <laughs> soon as I turned this thing off, what'd you just pull out, sweetie? Go ahead. This. Show off. 
Let me see it. The quality of the hourglass <laughs> is Yeah, but still, that thing is, they have been pulling out these big old kaiju pieces, and I'm getting all the little itty bitty smurf pieces. The My is goodness. Not even yeah, but that's still, that's got lots of sand in there, but nice that's sand. a nice big old chunker, though. There you go, Bubba. Oh, here we go. This is my biggest piece yet. Beautiful. What'd you get, son? This. Oh, here you uh, Let me get that. Show the sun to it. All right. Oh, the other one. Really cool. Nice big piece, son. Mm -hmm. Great find, Bubba. See, I've been finding a lot of like small clusters. I don't know what this is. I'm leaving the I'm leaving the sand all around it, um, just to kind of help protect it for now. Because I'm putting it in a bag. And when it's in the bag, or if it's going to be in a bucket, it's going to rub up against other pieces, and I want to keep it whole and intact. Okay, here's another cluster oh haven't looked at it yet haven't i just started uh, moving this and i see the long line right there you see that line let's see if we can't get behind it push that out yeah, it's just a little two incher but man it's got some good quality on it though Another splinter. See, this is why I wear gloves because uh, these selenite crystals can break, and then you have these needle-like uh, splinters that are just kind of loose right here in the clay or right here in the dirt. You can stab yourself with it. So one of the things we look for is this shine. See that? We've got uh, quite a few of them over here together, and it seems like what I've uh, found out so far is that we don't have lone wolf um, kind of crystals. I mean, yeah, there might be some, but for the most part, um, if you find one, you're gonna find some more. And you can see right next to this uh, crystal, okay, so you have this uh, the milk chocolate right next to the dark chocolate right here, all right? And it seems like the crystals are forming right underneath that. Here we go. My son and I just moved over here to this spot. I have been finding that I need to dig probably about six inches deeper here than where I was digging at over there. Well, that's what you find, son. Dirt. So you got this piece my uh, baby son just found. That's a really cool inclusion, son. All right, so my son and I were kind of digging. We got a little bridge here. It's going to be a race to who can get to the good stuff down there. I've been finding some pretty decent pieces. I've got a whole bunch of them thrown in here. Uh, a lot of clusters. They're still covered with a lot of this sand. I think I just got my best piece of the day. This right here is just one big uh, solid selenite cluster. I'm hoping it stays together. I'm gonna leave it packed up in the sand and uh, we'll take it home and get it cleaned up and uh, see how it turned out. All right, it's uh, close to three o'clock. We're gonna start heading out of here because we have got to go to the Twister Museum uh, from the movie Twister. And it's uh, just about 45 minutes or so kind of east of here. But I just got my last find for the day. It's even got a little shark fin there at the top. Pretty cool stuff.
All right, let's head home, clean some of these things up and take a look at them, see how they look all washed off. All right, so we stopped up here at the bathrooms to get dressed real quick and put on some dry clothes. We're gonna head over to the Twister the Movie Museum over about, it's probably about 45 minutes or so away from here. Make all the cow uh, references you want. <laughs> We got cows. So this is the town of Waquita. Waquita, Oklahoma. Here we are in Waquita, Oklahoma. From the movie Twister. This is one of the scenes in the movie where they use that water tower. They are just now leaving Aunt Meg's place when they show this clip. In the back of the red truck, you can see one of the Dorothy machines. My daughter said it reminds her of uh, Radiator Springs. So this is the Dorothy one? Weren't there four? It was one through four. That's what I was thinking. All the action scenes. So the museum itself is free to enter. They do accept donations though. There's a lot of movie memorabilia and there's quite a few things to purchase from the gift shop as well. The lady that runs it was an extra in the movie. It was neat hearing all the behind the scenes stories for the film. This is a fun little museum. If you're in the area, definitely check it out. Now let's drive about two blocks over and check out where Aunt Meg lived. So this is where Aunt Meg's house was in the original Twister movie. They have a sign right there. You can see they have one of her wind charms up there. And some of the foundation. Um, right over there above my son's head. So this is some of the original stuff from the Twister movie where Aunt Meg's house um, used to be. I think this was a garden that was right next to her house. Do you require sustenance? Food. Red meat, we crave sustenance. Guys, we are not invading my aunt. Food. 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 The lady at the museum said that this town probably has more like around 200 people in it, uh, not 400. Um, the sign says 400, but that was a movie prop, apparently. So I rewatched the Wakita scenes in the movie Twister, and I found this sign that said that the population was 585. So now I'm not sure. Either way, let's go home and rinse off some of those crystals and see how they turned out.
Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day. God bless.